Okay, hey folks, Mark Locklear here. I just wanted to do a quick screencast on Chapter 3 and just talk about some of the concepts here, and we'll do uh, one of the practice exercises to kind of get you rolling and to uh, explain some of the key concepts of the uh, chapter. So Chapter 3 is how to work with data. We look at a couple of different things here, primitive data types, uh, arithmetic operators, uh, number four formats, um, also a couple of math methods. So I think what we'll do is work through uh, ec uh, chapter three, exercise two, and I won't do the entire program, but I'll, I'll do kind of work through some of it just so you can see some of the key concepts and uh, reinforce those. So I'm gonna go to example starts, and I'm gonna open up chapter three, exercise two, which is the test score app. So by this time, this should start to look um, somewhat familiar to you. Generally, a couple things, just to probably haven't talked about up to this point. These print line statements, of course, just out output the prints at the top of the screen. Generally, you notice our variables and maybe any objects we're instantiating are laid out at the top of the program, and that's what we, we do here. We kind of lay those uh, variables out at the top of the program, and then, then we if there's any work to be done inside of our while loop, that's what this does. In this case, rather than ask the user do they want to continue, uh, we, we're only looking for this 999. When the user enters 999, we exit the pro program. And then to wrap things up, we've got some output at the end. And in fact, before I write any code at all, I'll just run this and sort of sanity check it. So if I do 33, 44, 55, and then if I enter 999, uh, that exits the program and then gives me some output here. So if I look at a couple of things that exercise 3.2 asked me to do, uh, first thing is use the plus equals operator to increase score count and score totals. And it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, the book talks about if you notice uh, here, so here's our score count and score total variables it asks us to use plus equals. So I'll just do it uh, rather than do it for both of these I'll just do it for one. So plus equals is, essentially allows you to um, clean up some of this code. So rather than do score total equals score total plus score count I can do something like score total and then I can do plus equals uh, test score and what that does is that's essentially the same thing. In fact, let's just look at them side by side. So I'm gonna copy this and then paste this here. And in fact, let's just comment that out so we can still see it. And then I can remove this code here and I can say plus equals like that. So essentially that does the, the same thing. So again, uh, score total the plus equals says whatever the variable on the left side of the operator is, add that to whatever variable is on the right side. And so again, you can apply that same logic to score count. Um, I won't, I won't do, do that for you, but you, you'll, you'll need to apply the same plus equals operator up here for score count. So that's one of the things that asks you to do. The next one is um, and interesting and kind of, kind of fun, and there's a little gotcha there. Normally, I let students work through it, but this, since this is an online class, I'll, I'll, I'll at least uh, I, I'll do. Well, I won't do the min and the max. I'll do one of them for you, just so you can kind of see. Uh, so I'm looking at number three on, on exercise three two. It says, as a user enters test scores, use methods of the math class to keep track of the minimum and maximum scores. And when a user equals nine 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 to end the program, display. Uh, these, these minimum and max scores and the output at the bottom. So the idea here is, for instance, uh, when I ran the program before, I entered 33, 44, and 55 as my scores. And then down here for count, total, and score, I would also have a minimum number where I would print out the minimum score that was entered, and I would also have a max that would print out the maximum score that was entered. So, and, and notice too that specifically, we could probably come up with our own logic to solve this, but notice that specifically the program asks you to use uh, methods of the math class. So, let's talk about that first and what that means. Um, so, it asks us to use methods of the math class. So, I'm just going to type out, if I type math here, and type dot, notice what happens. Um, it shows me all of these methods that are available to the math class. So when we talk about 
object oriented programming and classes. Now we, we won't get into really getting into the guts of object oriented programming until chapter 7 but this is a good introduction to it so we won't go real deep into it but just know that Java one of the things it does is get there are classes that are available to you in this case we're looking at the math class and along with those classes there are methods that are available to you and for instance we're going to use the uh, we're going to use the max and the min class here to get our maximum and minimum numbers so in fact I'm gonna let's just do let's just do the min and so notice min does a couple things it takes two arguments and that's what I'm looking at here when I see this min and then in parentheses I see this int a and int b what that's telling me is and in fact it, it also notice up top I've kinda got an explanation and I did this one that doesn't give a um, doesn't get a, give a ton of de detail but sometimes it might but in this case I've got two arguments that I'm gonna pass in to this min and max and in this case um, in this case I'm gonna do let's just do the minimum so I'll do uh, minimum score and then test score is the other option that I'm gonna use here and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable here so again the idea here is that I'm trying to keep track of the minimum and maximum scores that are entered by the user so in this case I'm going to do minimum score like like this so this is a variable called minimum score and essentially it's gonna it's gonna keep it's gonna keep track of the lowest score that's entered by the user and it'll be updated each time this loop runs and I notice I've got an error here and of course that error is uh, because I haven't created this variable yet so I'm gonna come up top here and again where I've created the rest of my variables I'm gonna create this is gonna be in a new int a new integer object and it's going to be minimum score now here's kind of the gotcha is what you have to watch a lot of people miss is I'm gonna set this to 100 and I, I think the tendency for a lot of new programmers with a, a variable like this is to set them all to zero we're used to setting um, variables to zero the problem with setting this one to zero is the user is never going to enter, enter any uh, the user is going to always enter a number that's greater than zero so you really this minimum variable needs to be set to the max number the user can enter in this case 100 and now what, what, what now what will happen is um, it's set to 100 so the first time for instance the first time uh, this loop is entered if I enter 33 then 33 is going to be assigned to this minimum score variable okay and also we talked about using this min class that's what this min class does we could come up with our own math logic to handle this but the advantage to using a method from the math class is hey it, they've already Java's already kind of taking care of the logic for us, so we can just use a method to take care of that for us and now what I would do is again this variable min minimum score is going to keep track of the minimum variable so now I can come down here and I'm going to actually add another line to my output so I'll come down here and do something like that let's see how that works and I'll kind of get some formatting going here and so that looks pretty good so again I don't see any errors here and I do see this light bulb here and in fact if I hover over it let's see what it says it may split the declaration assignment that that's fine that's not giving really giving me an error that's going to give me a problem but again I don't see any red red squiggly lines or I don't see any 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 uh, any errors highlighted so I'm gonna go ahead and run this and give it a try and so if I do the same thing I did before enter 33 44 55 and then 999 to exit notice that it's got my minimum score here now I may be fooled here because notice the lowest score I entered was the first score and it's possible this variable is just grabbing the first so it's pr probably smart to let's test this again and kinda mix up our numbers some so now I'm gonna do 33 the lowest score is gonna be the middle number I enter and then I'll do let's say 77 for 
the last one, and then 999 to exit. And then notice my minimum score is still 33, so that's doing what I, I want there. Um, and again, you want to do the same thing for max score. I won't tell you exactly what you need to do. Uh, you need to think about this max score. You're not going to want to set it to 100. I won't tell you what you do need to, what you will need to set it to, but you won't need to set it to that. Last thing I want to talk about is the number four, the number format um, methods and objects. Um, notice that number five asks you to use the number format class to round the average score to one decimal place. And we'll be using the number format um, class quite a bit. Um, number format gives you a lot of flexibility with regard to um, formatting dollars and cents, things like averages, things like percentages. In this case we're just looking at the number of fractions and so if you notice here average score notice we've got this point zero on the end and we may not want that. I mean in this case where we're just averaging kind of round whole numbers you don't really need this dot zero on the end. It may not seem like a big deal but again from an application uh, development perspective if you've got a client and you're developing a public facing app small formatting things like that are going to be things that they, they're going to want and they may ask for so in this case I'm going to use the number format class so I'm going to actually create a, an object a number object and I'll just kind of walk you through this again we're not going to get heavy real heavy into it because uh, we'll cover this more in chapter 7 but if you check out this code so I'm using this number format class here. Uh, something else real quick too, you may get a situation, I want to remove this class. Um, I actually I ha already had this in. When you type in this text, you're going to see these red squiggly lines. You're going to see the you're going to see the exclamation point. And if you notice, uh, if I hover over it, it'll it'll say uh, symbol class that it, it can't find this number format and symbol class. Now that's where you need to import this. And an easy way to do it is just if I um, if I put my mouse on top of the class that's not defined and I do alt enter notice you get this it get I get this add import uh, Java text number format and the book talks about this a little bit but just know that for instance for all the programs that have used the scanner class you've noticed you're you're importing this Java util uh, scanner we just imported a, a number format object so we need to import this Java text number four, four format so again these are sort of utility classes that Java uses they're not there by default so when you add if you're using methods that are from a, a particular class you're going to have to import those classes um, so let's see how we're going to use this again there our goal here we said was to format uh, these scores to uh, uh, to just whole numbers and no uh, no decimal places so what we would do now is um, again we created this number variable that is of class number full format and now if we notice we type number dot notice we get a ton of methods that are available to that class so you know get get maximum get minimum fractional digits all those are methods that are available to us in this case we're going to set maximum fractional digits so I'm going to do set and then maximum fractional digits and I'm going to set that to one okay and what that means is hey I only want one um, uh, I only want one fractional digit there which means it's going to run it to a whole number now I need to apply this to my variables here in this case it's going to be average score so now what I'm going to do is that to format that I'm going to actually do number dot and if you notice I got four format if I just enter that and then the argument I'm going to pass to this is this average score variable so now I'm going to paste this inside here and so now again I don't see any red squiggly lines and I don't see any errors in the program so I'm going to go ahead and run it and give it a try so if I do 33 44 55 and now 999 to end so notice now an average score I uh, get 44 that's rounded to a single decimal place. Okay, so I think think that's it. Um, I think that's all I, I'll give you. Um, again, for this, um, again, make sure you uh, apply the plus equals method to this, this score count variable. And then also you need to uh, find and display the maximum 
uh, score for this uh, for exercise 3-2. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know via email. Um, all of the programs for chapter two look, look good. I haven't graded those yet, but uh, they looked all, they, they, they looked good. Again, make sure a few people didn't submit zip files. Make sure uh, you zip up your programs first. Uh, also make sure you hit your, your due, due dates. A couple people missed the due, due date again, missing uh, one or probably even two. Coding exercise is probably not going to hurt. Probably not going to hurt you grade wise, but um, you need to make sure you hit those due due dates. And again, a lot of this that we're learning is going to piggyback on top of previous learning as we move forward. So if you miss a if you miss an assignment, um, even if you can't, even if you don't get to submit the work for credit. Uh, be sure you review it and make sure you understand it because everything we learn in here kind of builds on previous chapters. So good luck.